I can do a really simple uh, demo. This is this is essentially the GIF that we saw. So what I can do is I can run. This is a, a local LLM. Uh, for those of you that were interested in the model, it's this. Um, I, I don't know the different models very well, but this one is a Wizard LM seven billion. Um, I picked it because it was big enough, or it was small enough to run on this AMD GPU, but big enough to still be interesting. So um, what I can do is in this process, I can start running. Um, it, it loads up to LLM and it sort of seeds it with um, a little little prompt here. Uh, what you can do is you can you know basically have this prompt. But what I'm going to do over here in this other process is I'm going to run this, uh, what I call the covert listener. And it's just going to sit over here and it's it's modeling an attacker. Now, what you can probably see is like, I'm the same, I'm the same user um, that that isn't necessary. We've shown that this works across Docker containers. Um, it's only I'm only the same user because it makes the demo a little bit easier. Um, but we could say something like, tell me about San Jose. And you know the user could just be um, you know using using an LLM like we all do, um, and so we get a response about San Jose being a city in California, uh, in Silicon Valley, um, and then over here the listener, you know, it's always fun to kind of see the, the the different things it says, and and occasionally the weights can, or yeah, it's not the weights. Occasionally the input can get a little mixed up, and you get a little bit of uh, garbage, but yeah, it actually you can see like in real time we're able to get pretty good response like california uh we're getting this weird like couple of seals but um you know it's it's not perfect because essentially we're relying on the gpu to kind of schedule us immediately after that output layer um and you can see in a lot of cases we get it you could start to fine tune this attacker like we we didn't do much work on like trying to set up the timing and stuff it just happens to work pretty well as it is so this is the, the Apple application I have, and it's going to be running on my M2. And this kind of can, like what this does is this isn't going to do the AI um, proof of concept. This is just going to check for leaking memory. This is going to be one of our more basic probes. Um, this is a kernel. This is written in metal. So all of this is going to look a little bit different, but they should all kind of smell kind of the same. So I have this listener kernel. And what... What I do is I create this local memory. So this is kind of how you have to do this in the GPU programming languages. You create a, a set of local memory. I have it to be you know, 8K big. And then what I'm essentially going to do is I'm just going to iterate through this local memory. And you know, I haven't initialized it, so I'm going to iterate through it. I'm just going to dump this to global memory where I can examine it later on the CPU. So what I can do is I can run this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to search. This is just going to give me a dump of uninitialized local memory. It's going to give me a histogram. So if I search, what this says is it says, I saw the value zero this many times. So it's kind of a histogram. So we're only seeing zeros. So you might think, you know, the memory's gotten cleared. Like usually when you clear memory, it's zero. So this looks okay. So where's the security issue here? For technical folks, especially people, if you have a compiler background, What's actually happening here is that the compiler is seeing that we're accessing uninitialized memory. And a compiler is smart enough to say, hey, if this is uninitialized, it can be anything. So I'm going to give it zeros. So what you have to do is you have to kind of trick the compiler. What I have is this commented out code here. And I'm, I'm tricking this. When you trick a compiler, especially for GPUs, it's, it's more art than science. But what I'm saying here is if I can have just a couple of threads, this is just going to have all just two threads, threads with ID less than two, I'm going to have it go in and I'm just going to have it write something to local memory. So I'm just going to take two spaces out of our 8K and I'm going to write something here. In fact, I think this could probably be one. But now the compiler has a, has a difficult choice. The compiler says, hey, somebody's writing here and somebody's reading. So at this point, I can't, I, I can't prove that that's completely uninitialized. And so I actually have to go to memory and I actually have to do this dump. So now when I search, you can see I get a bunch of garbage. So this is stuff that's left in local memory, uh, probably from the graphics that's running. You know, I, I think sharing my screen on Zoom is probably running uh, some, some graphics. Um, so some of this, you know, even though it's a simple idea, uh, some of it you have to scratch your head and say, you know, there, there's, there's protection layers here and I need to think about clever ways how to get around them. Um, turns out though, it, 
if, if you know a little bit about compilers and how the code is executed, uh, you can get around them. So now I have another process on my M2. And what I can do is I'm going to seed this. So right here, I, you need to give it an anchor. This is how covert channels work. So I'm just going to give it X, Y, Z. This is some pattern that the listener can listen for. And I can say, hello, buzz robot. And then what the writer can do is the writer is going to say, I'm going to write this secret message along with this anchor. I'm going to write that to local memory. Now, if we go back to our listener and if we search again, we're not seeing zeros. We're seeing, we're seeing values, but we're seeing a lot less of them. And if we say, hmm, maybe, maybe this program, you know, this would, this would happen in like a Trojan. Maybe they've agreed on a secret key of X, Y, Z. And so if they agree on an, on a secret key, and if we look for that, then we can say, we can find that message between applications. So they agree on the anchor. And then anything that I write over here, um, this is a secret message. I'm gonna start writing that one. Oops, go to the listener. And so this essentially allows two pro, like this is kind of how viruses work, right? Like. Like if, if you have a Trojan in your application, they sort of agree on an anchor. And then now at this point, I'm communicating through two processes that should not be able to communicate this way. Um, and, you know, it's only like after we, after you do this, then you can like uh, expand the, the vulnerability to do stuff in AI. But, you know, it's always kind of fun to do these, these little, um, what these are called covert channels. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, you can, on your Mac, if you have an M2 like I do, this this is still there. And and while yeah, it, there's applications in AI, there's also this just opens up the door for like Trojans as well.